Okay, let's talk about summer pollen feeding. So it's July here in Texas. It's obviously going to be very hot, very dry. And so many times when it gets that hot, that dry in Texas, all the flowers start to die. And so we're a little past July 4th right now. And so it's, it's hot and dry and most of the nectar producing flowers have died at this point. So one of the things I really start watching carefully as we enter into our long hot summers is the amount of pollen stores in my hive. Because if those pollen stores start dipping too low, then I really want to supplement their pollen source. So I want to give them a pollen patty to make sure my bees don't run out of protein. Because as you guys know, the honey is the carbs in a bee's diet, the pollen is the protein in a bee's diet. And if they don't have both, they can't raise brood. And they'll start cannibalizing baby brood and the whole hive in general will become much um, more unhealthy as those worker bees are not able to feed the developing larva the proper diet. And that's so important in the summertime because in the summertime, they're raising the baby bees that are going to try to survive the winter. And if they don't have the right nutrition to feed those developing larva over the summer, then you're not gonna have a hive that can successfully overwinter. So one of the first things I look at is just what are the wildflowers doing? So am I seeing abundantly blooming wildflowers? If not, which is typically the case in Texas in July and August and September, then that's my first clue that I might need to do some supplemental pollen feeding. I also look at the entrance of the hive and see if the bees are bringing in a lot of pollen. That's another clue. If they're not bringing in a lot, then I'm concerned. So the, the real telling signs though are inside the hive. So let's take a look inside this hive and I'm just going to skip right through first box. Our first box is oftentimes a lot of honey and I want to see the brood nest. I want to see what's going on inside the brood nest. So I'm going to skip right down inside. We're going to give them some smoke. I want to see what's going on down here. Now most areas of Texas I recommend feeding pollen substitute in the summer months, usually about a one pound patty every other week or so. But, uh, but there are some areas that can have a good pollen flow in the summer and so it's always good to check. So the first thing I'm looking at is I'm trying to see do I have pollen reserves inside this hive. Now you guys won't be able to see in the video, um, there's our queen by the way. You guys won't be able to see in the video, but I see pollen in here, but I, I can literally count the number of cells. So there's not many, okay? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this frame aside gently because I know my queen's on it. And I'm especially gonna look at these outside frames bordering the brood nest. Because that's often where pollen stores are. And so in here, I see a little bit of so stored pollen down here but very, very little. What I'm looking for is a big, thick band of pollen around the brood nest, uh, around the brood. Or I'm looking for a half of a frame covered in pollen. Now this is all just cat brood. I see no pollen reserves in here. I'm gonna set that frame aside and I'm gonna keep looking. But I'm really looking for some significant stores of pollen, either a half a frame that's completely packed with pollen or at least some healthy bands of pollen around the brood. And again, I'm not, I'm not really seeing that. I'm seeing a scattering of, ce of cells that have pollen in them here and there. So you can see it kind of down in here. I've got a little bit of pollen. Now this is cat brood over here, but I've got some pollen down in here. And you can always tell the difference by just taking your hive tool, kind of digging in a little bit. You can see that's, that's not a baby bee, that's pollen. <laughs> so you can always dig in a little bit to see what's what. But uh, so yeah, I'm not really just seeing those good healthy bands of pollen. I'm not really seeing half a frame of pollen anywhere. Uh, and so I would typically go through this whole hive looking for that. And if I'm not seeing that, the other thing I try to take a look at is I try to take a look at the developing larva. So again, it's gonna be tough for you guys to see in the video, but back here in this frame that had the queen on it, this frame is full of developing eggs and larva. And so what I'll do is I'll hold this frame so the sunlight shines into those cells. And I look at those larvae that are usually between 12 and 48 hours old. 
and they should just be absolutely floating in royal jelly. They should be, there should just be a puddle of royal jelly that those little larvae are floating in. If they look a little bit dry, like, hmm, they're not really floating in royal jelly, um, then I'm a little bit concerned. That often means that the bees don't have the nutrition that they need to sufficiently feed those little larvae. A quick, easy way to do this if it's hard for you to see larvae, you can just get your smartphone and just hold the frame really still so that that sunlight is shining right into the bottom of those cells and get your phone and just slowly, slowly film all over that frame at different, different heights all over the frame and then go back into your house and uh, you can really then zoom up on those cells with your phone and you can usually see if there's enough royal jelly down in those cells. So, but they should look like they're floating and they should never look dry. Okay, so I've determined this hive could use some pollen substitute. So it's real simple at this point. This time of year, I really recommend using a pollen patty, not uh, dry pollen, that only typically works in the fall. So I'm gonna recommend a pollen patty. So I just give the hive some smoke. This is our one pound pollen patty. You want them to be very soft. And so you can see this one's very pliable. It's very soft, kind of like peanut butter. That's what we're, that's the texture we're going for. If it's hard, bees won't touch it. So it needs to be very soft. You leave the paper on. It helps keep the patty soft as the bees are eating it and keep it from drying out. And you're just going to give the hive some smoke and you want to place it directly on the top bars right in the middle of the hive just like that okay now you don't want to give them more than they can eat in about a week and so what you're going to want to do is come back in about a week and make sure the vast majority of this patty is eaten if it's not then you you can pull out the excess throw it in the freezer uh, for a couple days and then put it back on because what is going to happen is small hive beetles love these pollen patties so you want to, uh, if, it's, if it's on there more than a week, then the small hive beetles can lay eggs, those larvae can hatch, and they can start making a mess in the hive. So you wanna leave it on for about a week, take off whatever they haven't eaten, throw it in the freezer for a couple days, you can put it back on. And that helps keep the small hive beetles at bay. And you can see the bees, I mean, they, they love it, especially if they need protein. Uh, they just really go crazy for this patty. You can see they're already starting to eat uh, all over this patty. So, I recommend doing about uh, one patty every other week or so throughout the summer and that'll just really make sure that your hive has all the nutrition they need, they can raise healthy baby bees, and that queen can uh, just keep laying at 100 miles an hour and that'll really help keep your hive nice and strong. So the next box just goes right back on top. There's enough space between the boxes for that patty to fit. So we just put that next box right back up on top like that and you're good to go. Perfect. <laughs> what you say?